I've been uh, with WSO2 for the last 13 years and uh, mostly worked on building uh, WSO2 identity server. WSO2's uh, vision in IAM uh, is to build an API-driven, uh, developer-focused <coughs> IAM product to address uh, CIM use cases. Uh, we believe in uh, moving forward every uh, service you develop, every API you design, uh, every device you use, every person you interact with uh, will have a managed identity. In building a CIM solution, uh, you need to integrate with all these components, or in other words, you can't operate in silos. Uh, that uh, we see as a need for a developer-focused IAM product to build a CIM solution. Identity Server is an open source IAM product uh, released under Apache 2 license, uh, just like any other WC product. Uh, at the moment, uh, we have 200 plus paid production customers and 500 plus educational institutes using Identity Server globally. Uh, that's in addition to 1000 plus completely open source deployments with no WC subscriptions. I would say 90% uh, of identity server deployments are uh, customer facing, addressing uh, CIM use cases across uh, multiple uh, verticals, including uh, financial, government, healthcare, uh, education, automobile, retail, and, and many more. We have a very active uh, Slack community. So if you have any questions related to the product, we invite you to join our Slack channel. Uh, the entire identity server team is uh, on it to uh, help you. With that little background uh, with respect to the product, I believe uh, we'll qualify as a well-established vendor in the IAM domain to talk about CIAM. The major goal of CIAM is to drive the revenue growth by leveraging identity data to acquire and retain customers. It will build an uh, identity-centric ecosystem to nurture an anonymous uh, website visitor into a well-known loyal customer. We have come across uh, multiple phases in the past, and today at the age of customer, IDNT has become the glue for all contextual marketing. In doing that, in our uh, journey towards CIM, we face multiple challenges. In a, in a typical workflow, uh, many follow to onboard a customer. We start with an anonymous website visitor, then nurture this anonymous website visitor to a lead and to a qualified lead, and finally to a customer. There can be uh, multiple variations uh, of this flow, and we could be using uh, multiple channels to onboard customers. Then uh, uh, when we have multiple channels, multiple points of connections and data sources, that lead us into another problem. Data related to the anonymous users may reside under marketing data sources. Uh, data with respect to leads and sales might uh, be under CRM data sources. And the identity data of customers would be under the IAM system. So uh, with this approach, we'll end up having siloed data sources. And those siloed data sources may not know how to talk to each other. 52% of uh, marketing uh, leaders responsible for data and analytics believe data integration and uh, data management are the most time-consuming activities. And also over one third of marketers say their inability to integrate data is the biggest obstruction to the success of the analytics team. This is, this is a real challenge which we need to find a solution to. Then uh, protecting consumer data at large scale. Unlike in uh, Workforce IAM, in a typical uh, CIM system, we work with millions of users. So we need to worry about how we securely store the PII data of these users and preserve privacy. This is another challenging area we need to worry about. When we build a CIM solution to address these challenges, these are the core functional requirements we need to worry about. All of them are very much uh, self-explanatory, so I won't go into the details. Then again, uh, what matters most here is how you build these core CIM features while addressing some of the key non-functional requirements, which we call as five pillars of CIM. What you, uh, your customers and your partners experience is the tip of the iceberg. So, 
that's the experience your CIM solution is building. Underneath to uh, build the right level of user experience, you need to worry about these five pillars. Scalability is one of the key requirements in any CIM system. Unlike in uh, workforce IAM, in, in CIAM, the difference between the average load and the peak load is considerable. So in a traditional way, if you provision your hardware to address the peak load, you will end up wasting a lot of your resources. In uh, one of the financial institutes we worked with, uh, they were building a CIAM solution uh, for over 1.5 million customers. On an average day, they expect 350,000 logins, having uh, daily peak times around 9 to 10, 12 to 1, and 3 to 4 p.m. So uh, if we assume uh, 300,000 users will log in the system during uh, this three hours peak time, the expected load per minute would be around 1,700 users. But uh, in two days every month, they expect 5,000 logins a second. So that is uh, 300,000 users per minute. Those two days are in fact uh, the payday and uh, the day after that. So the average load is uh, 1,700 logins per minute while the peak load is 300,000 logins per minute. That's a huge difference between the average load and the peak. So just having the ability to address scalability needs is not just enough. Your CIM system should know how to auto scale up and down based on the demand. Then the security. If you handle any customer data, the security should be one of the topmost priorities. You would need to worry about how your CIM system stores and processes PII data. And also uh, from the customer's point of view, they do expect some control around how you collect, store, manage, and share their personal data. Any misuse of customer data, whether deliberate or not, can significantly damage uh, the brand equity. Yahoo, for example, was in uh, the middle of a series of data breaches a few years back that exposed the PII data of more than 1 billion users. That did cost the company 350 million USD. They had to uh, lower the sales price of uh, its email and uh, the other digital services, which they sold to Verizon from uh, 4.83 billion to 4.48 billion to account for uh, the potential uh, backslash from the data breaches. Usability is another key aspect. There are three types of users who need access to your CIM system your customers, uh, some of your employees, and the partners. The customers demand low friction access, uh, both during uh, the login flow and during the registration flow. Then some of your employees, like uh, the help desk administrators or the CXOs. Uh, CXOs especially would uh, expect your CIM system to build dashboards to give a better business oversight. Then comes the extensibility. So both the extensibility and the developer focus go hand in hand. Organizations uh, need to continuously improve the level of consumer engagement and adapt to the changes in technology, uh, business models, uh, competitions, uh, regulations, and customer experiences or customer preferences. To address that, you need an agile, uh, event-driven CIM platform that can flex to meet both new business opportunities and new challenges. So your CIM system should be able to address uh, common CIM needs out of the box, while its architecture should permit extending the platform to address unique business requirements. That's why uh, we see CIM is a solution you build, not just a single product you buy. Then again, uh, uh, there's a misconception that some do sell CIM as a product. If you are familiar with ESB or the, uh, the enterprise service bus, this is quite similar to how some sold ESB as SOA or uh, service oriented architecture probably a decade back when SOA and ESB were quite popular. SOA is in fact a pattern and, and ESB along with other integration tools and uh, proper architectural designs 
help you build a service oriented architecture esp itself you cannot call it so the same analogy applies to ciam and int provider itself alone does not bring in ciam it's an integrated system that you need to build with uh, other business uh, systems like crm systems uh, marketing platforms e-commerce platforms uh, fraud det detection systems risk engines then uh, content management systems data management platforms and so on to cater these requirements your crm solution has to be accessible api driven and developer friendly that will help you reduce the cost as well as the time to market then uh, the apis and integration 60% of uh, digital transformation projects start with integration as i mentioned before uh, cim is not just a product it's a solution we build when we build the cim solution we need to integrate with multiple components these components uh, can be an int provider a crm system marketing platform e-commerce platform a cms and so on so we need to worry about how we build an integrated cm solution the the, the key enabler for integration is the apis all the components in a cm infrastructure should expose their respective functionalities via apis and and they can be in house or outside of your local infrastructure for example uh, when someone uh, visits your website and downloads a brochure the website talks to an api exposed by the identity provider to do a light registration then uh, the identity provider talks to hubspot via an api to create a new lead and uh, while onboarding a customer uh, the identity provider talks to an identity verification service via an api and upon a successful verification the identity provider may call hubspot to upgrade the lead status to customer and may also call uh, sales source via api to create a customer record then also during both logging and registration flows the int provider may push stats to a mix panel via an api so you would know how long your customers spend on logging and registration pages so uh, you can do uh, ab testing to try out different page designs simultaneously and pick uh, the most optimal one these are just a few use cases but in practice the number of integrations can can be limitless when you expose an api and and also when you consume apis you need to worry about security we need to worry about securing apis at the edge and also securing communications among the components in your cim system here is uh, the platform view of cim in one of it Uh, it reports uh, mckinsey groups platforms into three uh, broad categories in general let's see how this platform view is applicable to ciam uh, with respect to what we discussed so far for example uh, in ciam uh, the customer journey platforms cover the customer experiences of signing up logging in um, associating uh, social accounts account recovery consent management and so on the business capability platforms worry about uh, customer relationship management uh, customer data management uh, preference management business analytics and and so on then uh, the co it platforms provide the shared technology on which the customer journeys and and uh, business capabilities run uh, for example uh, the cloud platforms the data analytics environments and other integration solutions over the time uh, we have spoken to hundreds of customers and probably thousands of leads from all those conversations uh, what we have learned is different customers are at different levels of maturity in building a cim solution some even don't know they are doing cim most businesses do start with level 0 or at non existent maturity level at this level Uh, you don't worry about tracking any customer interactions probably uh, you don't have an online portal and uh, probably you don't do any sales online in case you have an online portal uh, you may use it only to share your product and uh, contact information and would not expect any dynamic customer interactions 
probably uh, you may use systems like Viber, WhatsApp, or uh, a phone line to accept orders, but still uh, you don't worry about tracking who places which order. Many restaurants, uh, taxi services, uh, retail stores, and family businesses follow this model at the start. When you uh, uh, walk into a restaurant, uh, no one knows about you. Even if it's the same restaurant, you are going back again and again. Each time uh, you need to pick where you want to be seated and what you want for the meal. Same applies for taxi services uh, other than uh, Uber and Lyft. Whenever you order a taxi, you need to share the address you need to go and uh, you can't just say drop me home or drop me to the office. At level one or uh, the managed identity phase, you only worry about onboarding your customers to the system and digitally manage their identities. Even under level one, uh, the emphasis uh, different companies put on uh, how they want to manage their customer identities varies. One may only worry about uh, onboarding customers via an online portal and then uh, let them authenticate the system via username and password. Another company would worry about integrating with social IDPs for registration, uh, enabling uh, strong authentication options with adaptive authentication, integrate with risk engines, do eye analytics, and so on. What you do in this phase is uh, distributed across a, a broader spectrum. But still, you only worry about managing identities. No uh, CRM systems in place, no uh, customer preference management systems in place. I would say uh, most of the companies who are working towards a digital strategy are in this phase or at least uh, start with this phase. Then again, the question is how long you want to be in this phase. We've worked with many customers uh, who've, been, who've been in this phase uh, for years and uh, some even for more than a decade. What we have seen is the more you are in this phase, you start building disconnected identity silos. You may use a federation between applications and an identity provider, but still uh, will end up having multiple federation silos, probably by different departments. Each department may have its own identity store and identity provider, which will result in duplication of identity information across the company. Level two is one uh, step forward from the managed identity phase. Here you have an identity management system in place and you also worry about having a CRM system, a marketing platform, an e-commerce platform, a CMS, a data management platform, and many more to know about your customers better. One deficiency we see in the companies in this phase is even though you collect customer data at different contact points, the data sources are still disconnected and does not help in building a unified profile for a given customer. When you want to generate a report across multiple data sources, uh, that would require high labor intensive process with human involvement. And even in uh, some cases, you may fail to find a correlation among different data sources. This is in fact, the phase we see a company would start worrying about a CIM system. Once you are in this phase, you'll understand the benefits of building a unified view of a customer. And at the same time, you'll start realizing the deficiencies in your current system that prevent you from getting there. Level three is the connected phase. This is the phase where you start integrating your IEM system with your CRM system, marketing platform, e-commerce platform, CMS, data management platform, and, and others. This helps in building a unified view of your customer. So you can see how long it took to nurture an anonymous lead to a loyal customer. Progressive profiling is uh, one of the key elements of this phase. When you onboard a customer, you only request a minimal set of information. But as he or she starts using the system, the system will start learning more. The system can learn more from the user's behavior or else directly ask from the user for inputs. Irrespective of how uh, the system learns about the user, 
it will feed those data into the IEM system using an API. This helps the IEM system to make much informed decisions with respect to uh, the user's actions, as well as share a unified profile of uh, the user among all the applications. Another uh, advantage uh, you see in integrating uh, IAM with other business platforms is uh, you can track the customers across multiple platforms or uh, across multiple devices. Most of the marketing platforms track users by cookies. So uh, when you use cookies, you can't track users across multiple devices. But having your marketing platform integrated with the IAM system helps you identify user interactions across devices. This is one reason um, I would say arguably why Google introduced Gmail. Uh, you are always logged into your Gmail account or indirectly to your browser. So Google can correlate your search patterns with your identity and uh, they can do that across all the devices. Then Apple ID probably introduced for the same reason. Uh, when you use Apple ID, Apple knows uh, which apps you use from your mobile device as well as outside of your mobile device. To uh, build a CM solution in this phase, you would need more than an identity provider. You need to worry about integrating systems, exposing data as APIs, managing uh, those APIs and, and many more. This is uh, why we see uh, many customers in this phase work with system integrators to build the CM solution if they don't have a strong development team in-house. Finally, uh, the level four or the optimized phase. Omnichannel access is a key feature we see in the companies who operate at this level. In an omnichannel environment, the customers interact with the business via multiple channels, but still uh, will get a seamless continuous user experience. If you are an Amazon customer, you can place an order via its website, uh, mobile app, Alexa, or via Kindle. And uh, when Amazon announced Amazon Books a few years back, their intention was to bring the same digital experience you have on Amazon.com to the physical world. If you visit an Amazon bookstore, uh, you will see uh, the book reviews, uh, ratings, and many other digital-only features there. Then uh, Amazon Go. Uh, uh, when you enter into an Amazon Go store, uh, the system seamlessly authenticates you via the Amazon Go mobile app. Then it uses sensors to track uh, items as you put them into the cart or return them to the shelf. And finally, uh, your Amazon accounts get automatically charged with no cashier involved. So this is the next level of omnichannel uh, experience Amazon is building and identity is key in doing that. Then uh, the CXO dashboards is another key feature we see in this phase of CIAM. The CXO dashboards get updated in near real time with the data with respect to the current status of uh, the business and also uh, the predictions derived from integrating with machine learning systems. Also in this phase, uh, machine learning and behavior analytics are being used to suggest how you uh, can design better uh, more effective UX uh, A-B testing. Here's a summary of the maturity model. Uh, and uh, now the question is how we get from level zero to level four or from non-existent to optimized. That's where we see the need for a carefully designed integrated supply chain for CIA. In general, a supply chain is a system of organizations, uh, people, uh, activities, information, and other resources involved in uh, supplying a product or service to a customer from uh, the inception to delivery. In the industrial supply chain, we see five main phases. Under sourcing, uh, you find uh, the raw materials, uh, machinery, uh, labor which you need to build your product. In doing that, you will also find out uh, the suppliers that you need to work with. One of the McKinsey reports claims on average an auto manufacturer has around 250 tier one suppliers. Then during the manufacturing phase, you build the product, then distribute it, uh, sell it. Finally, the consumers start using the product. 
we can build a similar analogy in the digital supply chain. If you are building a CIM solution, then in the discovery phase, you need to figure out what you need to buy and what you need to build. You need not to build everything from scratch. Uber, for example, uses Google Maps for navigation. It's one of the most critical parts of Uber to build a smooth experience for its riders. From uh, 2016 to 2018, for two years, uh, they paid 56 million USD to Google for using Google Maps. But then again, uh, it's a peanut when you compare that with their revenue in 2019, which was 14.15 billion USD. So you need to make the right decision and uh, the discovery phase is critical to find out what's best for you. In terms of CIM, uh, during the discovery phase, you need to find out what you want for your IEM system, uh, for your CRM system, marketing platform, e-commerce platform, uh, fraud detection system, risk engine, CMS, uh, data management platform, and, and many others. For each of these systems, uh, you would need to pick a supplier or a vendor. Once again, one of the uh, McKinsey reports claims, technology companies have an average of 125 suppliers in their tier one group. Then again, you need not to pick everything at once. You can go for a phased approach. In the development phase, you start building your CIM solution by integrating multiple systems together, which should finally result in the right level of use experience that would help you to drive the revenue growth by leveraging IDN data to acquire and retain customers. So that's the whole goal of CIM. Then during the deployment phase, you need to come up with a model to address some of your non-functional requirements such as scalability, security, and so on. Now uh, the system is up and running and you start onboarding customers. Now you need to start monitoring the customer experience. Uh, you need to see how the customers use your product, their pain points, and, and so on. And then the digital supply chain will continue. You go to the next phase, do the discovery based on the services you need, and then keep going. Finally, uh, the takeaways. The goal of CIM is to drive the revenue growth by leveraging IDN data to acquire and retain customers. Organizations need to continuously improve uh, the level of consumer engagement and adapt to the changes in technology, business models, competition, regulations, and customer preferences. An agile event-driven same platform can flex to meet both new business opportunities and new challenges. A CIM system should be able to address common CIM needs out of the box, while its architecture should permit extending the platform to address unique business requirements. As a CIM solution matures, a properly designed digital supply chain helps to get from non-existent measure level to optimize. WS's vision in IAM is to build an API-driven developer-focused IAM product to address CIM use cases. Thank you very much.